Because of what you know. Good after, good evening, everybody. Um, be, be, before we get started, you know, for for a while we're probably going to have two sergeant at arms, and, and we're going to be probably a little more strict as it relates to people talking out in the audience, uh, out of turn and uh, cell phones. So could you please make sure you turn your cell phones down now? Um, we're just trying to keep the meetings very orderly. But could we, uh, I'm going to call to order the meeting of June 24th, 2014. Could we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Write it over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before, before we get started, um, we have a few presentations to make. Is Jan Vogel here? Could Jan, would you just take a minute and tell us about the Fit for Gold program? Because we're going to give um, scholarship awards to two of the uh, participants in the Fit for Gold program. You know that we're the chair city for uh, the South Bay Workforce Investment Board, and Jan is uh, uh, an angel on earth. So, <laughs> Jan. Thank you, Mayor, uh, members of the council. The Fit for Gold program is, we're just really proud of this program. It's, it's taking young people that are mostly high school students and placing them at elementary schools and middle schools. And they tutor them in, in academics and physical fitness and nutrition, and something magical happens. Whereas schools may graduate 50, 60, 70% of the kids from high school, we graduate 98% of those participants. And these are regular kids that go to school. They all graduate high school, and 93% go on to post high school uh, education. So they do a wonderful job and, and the mayor was there, we gave them awards, we gave them medals. The mayor put a gold medal or a silver medal around their neck. Wonderful kids we had, I don't know what, about 50 or 60 kids this year. Yes. And, uh, and, and, and two are here tonight. Okay, so, yes. all right, thank you. And so uh, first I'd like to have Desi Montgomery come up. She maintained a 3.6 GPA from the 9th through the 12th grade and earned a scholarship to San Jose State, and we're going to give her a $500 uh, stipend to add to that scholarship. Des <laughs> and so we're going to ask your family to come up and over here by the city seal, and we're going to council going to take a picture with you. But you want that small check that Melanie has. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's cashable. So that's a $500 scholarship.
Our next presentation is to Guadalupe Meja. She maintained a 4.2 GPA from the 9th through the 12th grade and earned a scholarship to California State University at Long Beach. And we are presenting her with a $500 scholarship. <laughs> over here with your family. And just to make it perfectly clear, there's, there's no city money involved in this. This is from the Bank of Butts, so. Okay, um, and finally, we have Simon Katima. Now he's uh, in the seventh grade, and he's being recognized for a speech uh, that he gave. Uh, he's, when he grows up, he wants to be an inventor or a surgeon. And I've heard from people that have heard the speech that he is presidential material, so I wanted to get in on the donations early. <laughs> and so we're, so we're giving him a $100 scholarship as he promotes through the eighth grade. Simon, could you come up and share your speech with us? <laughs> Show him where the mic is, Sergeant. I know, but I want to close up. Hello, my name is Simon Ketema. Um, I currently finished my seventh grade year at Mayfair. I am 13 years old, and today I will present a speech to you titled, How My Passions Impact the World. Everything around you, be it small or large, has been crafted by the hands of people with passion, perseverance, and other spectacular and admirable traits. Nancy Coey, a professional speaker, puts the concept of passion in one of the best ways possible. When work, commitment, and pleasure all become one and you reach that deep well where passion lives, nothing is impossible. And this applies to everything. There are so many things to do in the life ahead of me. And all I need to do is find the thing that's right for me, which may not be easy, being that there are many obstacles. But once I find what I love. Once I find my passion, there is not a single thing I cannot do. My personal passion lies in inventing. With this, there are infinite opportunities, which is why I love it so much. My imagination is a key step in my passion, or any passion. It feels like I do not have enough time to design and ideas before another one forms in my head. As I look around, I am inspired by humanity's ability to achieve their goals and think of others in the process. This inspires me to pursue my passion and think of others in the process. There are people who follow a false passion. They are deluded by opportunities of high pay that will leave a heavy burden on them and leave them dejected and melancholy. But find a job you love and you will never have to work a day in your life. <laughs> there are people who want to follow a passion, but later give up, seeing as it's too difficult for them. But the father of Richard Sherman, a professional football player, said three simple but compelling words. Why not you? What makes you unable to pursue your passions and your ambitions to assist in humanity's struggles in life? 
These words inspire me greatly and keep me going in my passions. The only mistake you can ever make is giving up. As a 13-year-old presented himself with such dignity and eloquence, give them all a big hand. <laughs> Madam Clerk, could you call the roll? Sure. Oh, oh, excuse me. So there's one, well, she can call the roll. Please call the roll. Okay. A quorum is present. Did you want to do housing and finance as well? Yes. Uh, a quorum is present. Um, we have a commendation honoring Sergeant Jose Gonzalez. I, I'm, I'm, it's on here, so I think there may be a mix up. Yeah, Mary. So, anyway, we will scratch that for now. We'll postpone it for now. Public comment. Any persons wishing to address City Council on any item on today's agendas other than public hearings may do so at this time. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. How are you today and residents of Inglewood? Um, I'm going to point out item four on the consent calendar. There's a typo there. It actually is $150,000 instead of $150,000, and it's money that's well spent. Before this board was here and previously way back when, there was a security uh, a system set up that was eliminated and we have lost money with that. So it's very much needed as we go ahead and rebuild on that. That's what I wanted to say when I looked at that. Well, also, um, I just want to say to the residents, come out. We have our library meeting with your commissioners on the fourth Wednesday of every month. This is your library. You need to come out. We're going to be communicating more because we realize it's just a disconnect in communication. But this is your library. We're one of the few cities that have their own library. So we need your help. We need your input. We need you to be able to keep this library going and continue on rebuilding the city. We've had an economic problem here, but if we all join together here, there's certain things that you need to work on with us, understand what we're looking at because we're looking at everything. Really, because we're really devoted, we're really connected. We've talked to the people that have appointed us, so we're working with them also, okay? So that's just me. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, going. Good evening, Mayor Butts and council members and city staff. Uh, I'd also like to speak on behalf of uh, item number four um, for f asking you to vote yes to fund this proposal, this and the uh, other 
regular materials for the Gale Sun gauge materials for the library. And also to bring your attention to something that I don't know if the library manager has informed you about that I learned today. First Studio in Inglewood, they're on Hyde Park, is an architectural firm that they are very prestigious. I'm sure some of you know about them. Well, they have donated with no grant money at all. They've absorbed the entire cost for this project called the uh, Book Igloo. It's in the <coughs> library's lobby right now. It still needs lots of volunteer hours in order to complete, uh, but that is being worked on. But I hope um, that you'll, you will choose to invest in our library, just as this architectural firm has, and so that our city can have some more pride like our mural at Darby Park. Uh, this uh, igloo is going to bring in a lot of visitors to our community in our library, and we need to keep it improved and upgraded and that security system put back in place. I hope you'll vote yes on both of those issues tonight. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good evening, council members. As one of your former library commissioners, I would appreciate it that we actually not only take care of the books and the libraries that we have, but we actually staff them appropriately so that we have both of them open far many more hours than we currently do. As I mentioned last meeting, I was appalled to see that in your salary schedule you actually have people who are not required to have credentials as are the librarians being paid significantly more than our librarians and I would hope that you make that correction. Um, I think that everyone should look at our salary schedule and see some of those inequities because they are glaring and some of the staff members that we have actually have gone to school to hope to inspire young people to learn to move on with their lives rather than to just go around in circles. Having uh, said that, I'm going to move on to the other item and that would be our housing item number, housing public hearing H and uh, that is a, hopefully you will give us a staff report to that before you ask us to speak because that is significant and then the departmental report. Um, I would hope that as you talk about that, you let us know what those special expenses accounts are. Because so frequently, it seems that you are hell-bent on getting out here yesterday and not expressing to the public what is actually being done. It seems as if we frequently are in a hurry rather than to explain how the tax dollars of this community are actually being spent. And since it is something that we each should have the right to discuss, other than the 20 word requirement and the Brown Act requirement, all of those items should be discussed before this community in this room. So hopefully you will begin to do that. I think the concept of how many individuals we have on Section 8, what their income level is, how many of them are portable, are all factors that should be for the entire public, and I know on one of those wonderful little documents, none of those numbers were available. And that seems kind of crazy, doesn't it? So how can you grant dollars if you don't know what you're getting for it? <coughs> Gil Matthew, uh, District 4, uh, Mayor and City Council. I'd like to speak on CSA 1 and H1. You know, that's uh, payment of bills. Now here again, uh, we've had some reluctance to talk about finances. Now here again, we have one or two councilmen saying that it's not important and here he come again, he's going to say the same thing. Yes, I am. I never give up, like the young man saying, I'll never give in. Because you've got to understand financial condition of this city. Now, you can sit all you want, you can be mum all you want, that's every one of you. And every one of you have a right to speak up. You don't need permission from the mayor to speak up. 
And I'm from District 4. I expect more of you. And if somebody is out of order, you call point of order and say they're out of order. I'm sick and tired of it because nobody wants to be responsible. That's not leadership. Here again, uh, DR2 and H4. You called up about Section 8. You get a recording. There's no Section 8 vouchers. Now, what are you doing? You're going to take the money, and it's an interagency transfer, and you're going to put it in a special expense account, which means non-restricted, and you're going to use it to balance something else. People want to understand what's going on here. And Monday is the drop-dead date for the success agency for the first six months. A lot of contracts are expiring, or did you know? I don't understand what's going on here. And two of you, you've been here. These other three have no idea what's going on. They just got here. They're new, newbies. They don't know. But Mr. Morales and Mr. Franklin, you've been here. You know what's going on. And it's not your fault now, but so stop dropping on the sword with all of this nonsense. That's what you inherited, just like President Obama inherited all the problems when he was elected. You did the same thing. And these other two, they just bought a ticket to the Titanic. So now let's be real and get here where we're going to solve the problems. You need the residents. You sit here, you got policemen to shut everybody down and with your rules of decorum. I even asked the, the city attorney, say he can't answer nothing unless he get permission from you. It's called prior restraint. Prior restraint. That's where you limit First Amendment rights. It's done in Congress. But I ask him, I can't say nothing. I've got to get permission from the mayor. That's crazy. Thank you, Mr. Matthew. Good afternoon, Ethel Austin. Could I speak on DR2? Yes, you, well, is it, a, yes, yeah, not a public hearing. Yes, okay, can. I think um, I'm going to follow up on what uh, Gail Matthews is speaking on. On this, how you say C, C what? C, B, C, D, B, G? C, D, B, G. And I need to ask the, you a question. When was the last time we ever did a home under this grant fund? Years ago, wasn't it? I, I couldn't say. Here. Now, this money that's being transferred into this, is that for rehabilitation of homes that we are doing or what? Block grants or the streets or what? What is this transfer well, I'll, for? I'll tell you what we're going to do. Since we're going to have a report on it, we'll be glad to explain it then. That way oh, we don't have to go okay. over twice. Thanks. Hello, council members. Mayor Butts. Hi. Hi. Um, something that's been brought to my attention, and I think it involves all of Inglewood. There are many elderly, as we all know, and yet the transportation bus that carries the disabled and elderly across the city doesn't run on Sundays. You know, I, I don't want to cut you short. You know this part is for something that's on the agenda. Oh, okay. Okay, and so maybe if this isn't on the agenda, maybe you could, maybe I know that you just stick around. So if you're not going to be here at the end, I'd be glad to accommodate you now. But if you're going to be here at the end, this would be the time. That would be the time to speak on it. Are you going to stay for the whole meeting? Well, I do have to get back before I Well, then start. you can go right ahead. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I no drive a wheelchair. That's no problem. <laughs> but I was wondering if there was maybe a possibility of finding a way for it to be extended to the weekends because a lot of people do like to go to church and sometimes the regular buses do not accommodate all areas like getting to and from church and I thought that might be important to council. Okay. Thank you. Mayor, can I comment? You certainly can. Uh, so thank you for your for your comments. Um, the second Friday of every month at 9.30 a.m., uh, the Metro Service Council 
is on the first floor in the community room. Mm -hmm. And we address specifically those issues. We call them headways and, the, and frequencies of, of the bus running. Mm -hmm. And you're welcome to come to that meeting specifically and we can address that question of concern, particularly on Sundays, and we need to know what bus lines you're referencing. Okay? okay. So if you can do that, and if you leave information, I'll make sure you, you get the notification when we have our next meeting. Well, mostly everybody on council gets yes, my phone number, so. I'm sorry I don't. All okay. right. If I can get it, if you leave it with the Sergeant of Arms, sure I'll get it later. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mayor. You. No problem. And any other further public comment? Good afternoon, Council, for members of the staff and to the residents of the City of Inglewood. I'm Roy Fisher of the 1st District. I concur with uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Matthews and also with uh, Ms. Sombrano. You know, it, uh, we really need to know more about uh, what uh, these monies are going to exactly before we can uh, intelligently uh, talk to you about them. And it seems to me that uh, uh, these reports ought to be come out. You ought to be very specific about, uh, you know, where these monies are going and where they're being transferred to and why. Uh, you know, Mayor Butts, <clears throat> as you talked uh, at the beginning about the quorum here, uh, you know, these officers are here, you know, and uh, we have all these problems in the street. It seems to me that, you know, one of these officers could take care of the decorum of this uh, council meeting and uh, uh, see that things are run uh, proper and respectable. I don't uh, think that there's anyone here that uh, disrespects anything that uh, goes on here uh, and that uh, we need these two officers here to uh, guide us. Let it be known that uh, when it comes to speaking, you know, uh, uh, people uh, have the right to free speech, and uh, I'm certainly going to uh, stand by, you know, this uh, Constitution that we have and say what I want and when I want. And I'm not going to be intimidated by any officer or any man anywhere, you know. So uh, I say that uh, one officer would be enough. You know, we have problems in the city. They need to be in the streets. With regard to uh, uh, other issues here, uh, I will come back and uh, speak uh, properly to them at that time. But uh, I, I think that uh, we ought to know uh, how our money is being spent and not wasted. First public comment. Item 1, CSA 1 and H1. Who will allow payment of the bills? Second. Madam Clerk. Um, Council and agency members, Dotson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Franklin. Aye. Mayor Chairman Buds. Aye. Item 2, CSA 2, H2, and let's open the finance authority as well and the successor agency. Uh, a quorum is present. All right. Approval of the minutes held the following for Council, Successor Agency, Housing Authority, and Finance Authority for June 10, 2014. Move approval. Second. Madam Clerk. Council and agency members, Dotson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Franklin. Aye. Mayor, Mayor Chairman Buds. Aye. Madam Clerk, what's the next scheduled matter? The next scheduled matter is a hearing to consider uh, a public hearing to consider an appeal of the Planning Commission's denial of a special use permit to allow the sales of beer and wine and distilled spirits for off-site consumption at a family dollar store located at 1000 South La Brea Avenue. Has notice of the hearing been given in a time, form, and manner as required by law? And do you have the affidavit on file? Notice has been given and affidavit is on file. Madam Clerk, have any communications been received on the matter? Is the complete planning file present? Uh, no communications have been received, and we do have the complete file present. Mr. Manager, is there a staff report on this matter? Yes, Ms. Linda Tatum, Acting Economic and Community Development Director, will give the staff report. Welcome, Ms. Tatum. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Butts, members of the Council. 
This item is a public hearing to consider an appeal of the Planning Commission's denial of special use permit 1192, which was a request to allow a Type 21 ABC license for the sale of beer, wine, and distilled spirits for off-site consumption at a family dollar store that's located at 1000 South La Brea in the C2 zoning district. The Inglewood Code requires approval of a special use permit to allow the sale of alcoholic beverages for this type of retail operation in the C2 zone. And the applicant, Mr. Steve Rawlings, applied for an SUP for this location. The existing Family Dollar is a retail store that provides a variety of retail uh, and sundry goods for sale to the public in an existing 8,000, approximately 8,000 square foot building in a uh, commercial shopping center at that location. The site is located on the east side of La Brea Avenue between Hardy Street and Arborvita and is just uh, west of Orchard Avenue, which is behind the store. The surrounding land uses on both sides of La Brea are commercial and the adjacent uses to the east along Archer uh, Drive are all residential uses where the properties are, are zoned R3. The applicant has expressed that approval of a, an ABC license or an SUP to allow the sale of alcoholic beverages would expand the selection of goods and services that would be available to family dollar customers and provide a convenience to those customers who could buy alcohol in conjunction with their other purchases. In the way of background, since 1998, the state of California has uh, issued a moratorium on the issuance of um, ABC licenses for the sale of beer, wine, and distilled spirits in communities that have an over-concentration of existing uh, Type 20 licenses per 2,500 residents. Englewood actually has an over-concentration at a level that is 1,000 205 residents per license, so it is subject to this moratorium. The city, um, in approving any request for a license, can make exceptions to that moratorium, but they have to make very specific findings in order to do so. And in considering this application, the Planning com Commission considered those findings, and they uh, are called findings for public convenience and necessity. And I won't read all of those, but there are a number of them that could be considered by the Planning Commission. And they are things such as, will the license be detrimental to the community? Would it provide an economic benefit um, to the community or a negative impact to the community? Um, will it provide a service that's not currently being provided to the community? Will it provide some type of cultural or other benefit to the community? So the Planning Commission considered all of these various findings when they made their determination. Um, as of January 2014, there are six active off-sale licenses within the census tract where the family dollar is located, and this is a ratio of one license per 1,089 residents and is higher than allowed by the state in order to uh, issue a new license unless there was a finding made that this use provides a public convenience and necessity. On March fifth of twenty fourteen the planning commission considered this request in a public hearing and after deliberating on the matter and hearing the public testimony they denied the SUP request based on the following findings they they uh, found that the area had an increase in crime while the city um, experienced a decrease in crime the crime in that particular uh, crime reporting district uh, actually increased the city has an undue concentration of ABC outlets in the subject census tract, and in that census tract, that concentration is higher than the city overall. They also found that granting the SUP would be detrimental to the neighborhood, which has already experienced an increase in crime and could have a potential uh, additional negative impact with the issuance of this potential license. They also determined that no additional convenience is provided by this store because there are existing licenses in the area where um, customers can purchase alcoholic beverages that are in close proximity to the existing family dollar. And lastly, they found that um, based upon the testimony of those who attended the hearing in opposition to it, as well as a written correspondence in opposition to the, to the uh, request, the Planning Commission um, found and that there was no public convenience or necessity served by the issuance of a license at this location and they denied the SUP request. In closing, staff recommends that the City Council uphold the Planning Commission's recommendation 
on this matter and that you adopt the resolution that's attached to the staff report. If the City Council determines to overturn the Planning Commission's de denial of this um, request, then staff would ask that the City Council direct staff to come back with a resolution approving the, de the uh, requested SUP. That concludes staff's presentation. Is there a presentation by the appellant? Welcome, please come forward and identify yourselves and uh... Certainly. Good evening, Honorable uh, Mayor and uh, members of the Council. My name is Steve Rawlings and I'm here this evening on behalf of Family Dollar Corporation and I, um, I do have a short uh, PowerPoint presentation that I'd like to make to you folks to kind of outline a broad uh, picture of, of, of Family Dollar uh, stores and, and our, our the company do want to uh, say to you that I, I, I'm not a direct employee of Family Dollar Corporation. I do uh, uh, consulting work for them throughout the state of California, assisting them with permits necessary for licensing their various stores throughout the state there. So um, uh, I may say we, um, but I, I don't want to confuse the issue there. So um, with that, I, I, I did have a small presentation, and I, I did want to say that on behalf of the corporation, um, on behalf of Family Dollar Corporation, they, they have certainly enjoyed their business um, here in the uh, community of Inglewood and, and are certainly happy that they've located their store here. Um, so with that, I wanted to um, <clears throat> give you just a quick presentation about who Family Dollar is. I've had the opportunity to work with the uh, Family Dollar for about two years now, and uh, um, I, I've had the pleasure of introducing them to many communities. Even though they have had a store here, oftentimes folks aren't, aren't familiar with who they are um, because in, in California they have a relatively uh, small presence. Uh, they're one of the largest uh, uh, leading uh, small box discount food and consumer goods stores. Um, they, they, they operate in, in spaces that are between about 7,500 square feet and 12,500 square feet and you can go in there and you can buy lots of products as I'm going to show you which here in California traditionally um, we've shopped at stores that are 40 and 50,000 square feet for the same products and this is a, a new concept to uh, California but uh, as I'll show you it's it's not such a new concept um, they are a fortune 500 company they're certainly very proud of that fact and uh, uh, they have um, opened 7,900 stores in 46 uh, different states by comparison Walmart um, has about 7,500 stores so uh, family dollar is actually a larger in terms of numbers of stores uh, as I said earlier their average size stores are, are relatively small uh, around the 10,000 square foot uh, size and uh, they are actually kind of considered as the primary retailer for about 65 percent of their customers that means that 65 percent of the people that come to their store rely on family dollar to be their store that they frequent most often to buy the staple goods that we all consume on a daily basis, milk, eggs, toothpaste, et cetera, et cetera. And the last uh, item I wanted to share was that uh, the, the typical customer that Family Dollar uh, finds that are in their stores are somebody between the ages of 25 and 50 that are, that are, that are typically female that are, that are there shopping for their family because they've learned over time that they can find the products that they're looking for in a rather short period of time and know that they're going to get great prices for it and don't have to spend a lot of time in a big store uh, shopping around uh, looking for the products that they um, uh, need. The other uh, demographic that we cater to quite often to are, are senior citizens that are on fixed income once again that they are looking for uh, um, a value. Um, Mr. Mayor, I, I know that I'm going to be pretty close on time. Is, is, could I be granted a little bit of latitude so I can finish up my presentation? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, Oh, I guess I have the clicker. Sorry. I like to emphasize to everybody what you can find in a in a uh, family dollar store. Uh, they have over 10,000 SKUs, um, which which is a, is, a, is a rather large number for a store that's only about 10,000 square feet. Um, you can buy meats in there, vegetables, bread, dairy, those are your types of grocery types of products. And then, of course, for your, your everyday consumer goods, laundry detergent, cleaning supplies, toothpaste, clothing, pet food, et cetera, et cetera. 
employ uh, over 40,000 full-time and part-time employees throughout the country. When you have 7,900 stores, you, you obviously have to have a very large team there. Um, uh, interesting thing, if you ever see the television show Undercover Boss, the CEO of the uh, company uh, appeared on that show. It was uh, um, actually a really, really uh, neat, neat episode of the show, but uh, just, a, just a little side note there. <coughs> Uh, family Dollar, I wanted to kind of give you a better feel for, uh, you know, who they are uh, and, and what they're trying to accomplish in every community. They want to be that place that people learn to go to for, for that they can shop very, very quickly for all of the different products that they um, have. Food is an item that a lot of people aren't, aren't really aware that they can actually get there. If you go onto their website, they have something called Three Meals Under $15. They'll show you how you can cook a dinner, buy all of the products inside of Family Dollar to make a, a great meal. And that's a meal for a family, not just an individual serving. And it's for under $15. And you can go onto their website any day. You can see recipes. Uh, uh, on there of, of great new ideas that you can uh, uh, serve for your family. That right now they're running something called Summer Recipes and they've got all these really cool salads and, and other types of uh, uh, fun things that you might see around the 4th of July time that you can uh, purchase there and all of those products can be purchased at Family Dollar. Uh, big, big emphasis that uh, you know that there's just your basic stuff that you need. You, you see you know major brands of, of things like ketchup and, and mustard and as well as uh, products like eggs and milk and so on and so forth. Um, we do carry leading brands uh, such as Tyson Foods and Hillshire Farms and I think I showed you some other slides that showed some of the other national brands. I think a lot of people sometimes think that it's all, a, all just generic brands. Uh, while we do have some of our own proprietary brands, we also do have a lot of uh, uh, nation, nationwide household name brands. The reason we're here this evening is, is that Family Dollar stores, as a part of their standard offering, as part of their standard offering to their stores, they would like to be able to sell a small quantity of beer, wine, and distilled spirits in each of their different stores. Um, and they take up a very, very small square footage of, of their store space to uh, offer that type of product. And it's intended to be nothing more than an incidental sale to the people that are already shopping at Family Dollar stores. It's, it's, we don't put it out there as a leader. We don't advertise it. Uh, it is intended for somebody who's there shopping for their family and who's buying their milk and their eggs and their diapers and their formula and so on and so forth and would like to be able to make that purchase of a bottle of wine to go with their dinner or, or beer. Um, you know, for, for consumption, you know, while they're watching a ball game or something along those lines. We dedicate a very, very small square footage uh, of our store to that, to the display of alcohol. It's intended, like I said, to be nothing more than an incidental sale to existing customers. And that actually just gives you a kind of a visual of, of typically it's set up as, as four, four feet of warm storage and, and uh, a couple of cooler doors. And that uh, uh, if, we do, if we do offer liquor, which we don't uh, in many of our stores, uh, it, it's in a locked glass cabinet uh, that only the store manager and, and lead cashiers have the keys to. A couple of items that I like to point out about uh, Family Dollar being a national retailer. Uh, they have a lot of policies and procedures in place and go through extra uh, measures to ensure the safety. Safety of their employees is a fiduciary duty of the corporation to make sure that they're providing a safe atmosphere. And we found that over the years, um, clean and safe stores are what keep, cu keep customers coming back. And so it's of the utmost uh, importance to us that we provide a safe atmosphere. And when it comes to the sales of, of uh, beer and wine, um, I've outlined for you a couple of items on here that are worth noting that, that we go through to ensure that we're responsible with it and that it, it's a um, product that's easily handled. Um, and the biggest thing is, is the carding system that we have in place. If, if somebody came forward and wanted to buy milk and eggs and, and a bottle of wine, when it scanned through the um, register, it would prompt them at that point in time to input the date of birth um, on the ID card. And if, it, and if you don't input the date on the ID card, the transaction does not complete. So it's a, it's a safeguard, one of the safeguards that we have internally, and that's uh, uh, across the country in all of our stores there. 
So with that, I, 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 that was just the, the brief presentation I wanted to give about the, uh, the corporation as a whole. Um, they are continuing to expand um, 7,900 stores. Uh, they didn't get there overnight. They have been working diligently since 1959 to provide the types of products that customers, which are family, families need most. It's a very, very unique concept. If you went to uh, the South or, or the Southeast, at least in, in North Carolina, I mean, family dollar is everywhere. You, you, you can't help but see a family dollar. You get to California where it's a very relatively new concept. A lot of people are really confused as to who they are, what they're trying to be, and the types of products that they can, that they, people can purchase there. And once people do start shopping there, we find that they become, you know, lo very, very loyal customers. And uh, we're continuing to expand here in the state of California. And as I said earlier, they certainly uh, have enjoyed the, the business that they've done here in the city of Inglewood and, and uh, are always out looking for additional sites to uh, uh, locate to and to uh, communities that they feel that they can serve a, a, a need and, and develop a very, very good customer base. In terms of our application and our appeal here this evening, uh, we worked with staff pretty carefully and the staff presented to the Planning Commission a recommendation for approval. And in that staff report, they, they did indicate that the police department uh, uh, did not have, and, and it was quoted in the staff report, have uh, great concerns about, the, uh, about family dollar and our operation selling a, a small bit of, uh, of, of alcoholic beverages. Um, they also recommended a condition of approval that limited this, the amount of square feet that we could use for uh, the display of alcohol, which we were more than uh, uh, willing to oblige, because when we say that it's intended to be an incidental uh, component of our business, we mean it. We, 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 we're not going to overnight uh, uh, just line the shelves with uh, you know, beer and wine and, and alcohol. It's intended to just simply be a small little section in our store so that somebody that's there to make all of those purchases doesn't have to make a second stop to uh, another store. Uh, I think that we've proven that we're a very, very good operator nationwide, uh, that we're a very, very responsible retailer and that we take the uh, dispensing of it very, very seriously. And we're, and we're here tonight to ask um, for some reconsideration by you folks uh, in terms of it is needed for Fortune 500 companies to stay competitive. We work on margins that you guys can't even believe that we work on. I mean, a tube of toothpaste, uh, there is no money in a tube of toothpaste. I, I, it is such a competitive business. And you, you don't make any money on milk. I mean, you're making very, 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 very small margins on this. And so Family Dollar and many of the other supermarkets, uh, supermarkets in California certainly have had a difficult time. They're in very, very large square footage spaces, and many of them have closed down. The margins are very, very difficult, and it's difficult to stay competitive. And we'd like to uh, continue to uh, uh, succeed and thrive here in, in the city of Inglewood. And, and as I said, they're always looking for additional sites. And, and it's very, very important to us to be able to sell just a small amount of uh, beer and wine. And your staff originally recommended conditions of approval that I believe um, you know, uh, uh, satisfy a lot of the public safety concerns that we all as citizens always have. And we were more than willing to agree to those. And uh, I understand that there may be other, uh, area, uh, other places nearby that, that, that do sell uh, beer and wine. But we find that customers want to shop at one place and don't want to have to make um, um, multiple stops. And I'll be quite candid and quite honest with you. I, I drove down um, La Brea, one of those locations that, that the city approved back in March of 2012 was, I think it's called Sir Speedy or Speedy Spot Liquor Store. Not a chance I would ever walk into that store. And I can't imagine that a lot of our customers would want to stop and shop at Family Dollar, drive down the street, and then have, a, and, and have to stop there to make a simple purchase of a bottle of wine that they're going to have with dinner. And that was approved by this city back in March of 2012, or at least that's when the license was issued. I'm just and, okay. and anyway. Okay, yeah. Now, now, you know, I know that we've helped the, the margin now because this is going on Time Warner and the current advertising rates, this was about $50,000 worth of advertisement. So you did get a lot of, <laughs> you could go home and say, hey, I got $50,000 of free advertisement. And I've let you go longer than I've ever let it. So and I to, greatly appreciate that. And that and that does conclude my, my presentation. And I thank you so much for your time and attention. Thank you. OK, or is there any public comment?
Oh my god. Make sure you got the button on, Mayor. Got the TV. And I'd like an extra minute. As you know now, you've been reading the paper. Everything I told you as a Vietnam veteran, conscious objector, is in your face. The VA is a mess. Sting opera challenge. Alfonso. Homeland Security came Alfonso, up. Alfonso, this is about the public hearing. Um, oh, we're not into the. No, 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 we're not there yet. Come, come back later. We, we'll be good. Oh, I'll be back. I'm not going. I, I nowhere. know that. Doing Schwarzenegger. I think somebody left their. Uh... Oh, that's. Good evening again, the work issue, first district. You know, I, I listened. Uh, very long as I did uh, when they had uh, the uh, they presented us upstairs. <laughs> Mr. Rollins is a consultant. I don't know why uh, they don't have their own people here rather than the consultant. One thing I heard though was that uh, uh, staff had recommended that they approve this uh, liquor uh, sales in these stores. I have asked you them last week, I'll ask you again to say no to this. Staff has already told you that the state said that we're all saturated with liquor in this city, you know. You've heard that it was a negative with regard to what goes on with liquor in this city. There is no reason at all for you them to uh, consider overriding staff on this issue, you know. It's a negative for the residents of this city, you know, and, and th these uh, dollar stores are coming into this city, and every one of them, once you allow one, the rest of them are going to follow and sell liquor in these stores. We're already saturated with negative stuff here. We don't need it. We don't need it. We don't need it. I uh, implore you, then, you know, for the sake of the sanity of this city, you know, I don't care about this nonsense that is only wine for dinner and stuff. You know, these people are out to sell liquor in this city and make money, and it's going to be it's going to be saturated because you've already already allowed these dollar stores to come in here. It's it's a negative, a negative, a negative. Please, please, please say no, each and every one of you. You know, I implore you. And I'll tell you what, you know, if you don't, you know, Leroy Fisher is going to be out there saying to every resident in this city that that individual, you know, is not good for this city, you know, because he is negative with regard to his votes when it comes to the interests of the residents of this city. Thank you. You're sufficiently terrified. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. My name is Jim Withrow. Um, when I found out that this issue was coming in front of the uh, City Council, um, I was at the Planning Commission meeting and saw that their um, application was rejected there. They were appealing it. So I went over to the, um, uh, the Family Dollar Store. And what I saw there was um, a very clean store uh, with with families in it, uh, teenage girls, uh, elderly couples were there shopping. But I also noticed that um, because they carry so many products, their aisles were very narrow and the shelves were very tall. Great to hide behind or you can't really view what's going on in there. And I noticed that they were emphasizing their family values. I think that uh, allowing the sale of alcohol in that store is going to be detrimental to those family values. I'm certain that I would not want my young child to be going to the store for a few items, groceries, whatever I need, knowing that there is alcohol for sale there and sometimes the, uh, the element that they happen to draw. And especially when you can just walk right across the street and there are stores there that uh, sell alcohol, 
There are stores next door within 500 yards that sell alcohol. So I, I really think that that uh, should not be uh, granted to them and we should uphold the Planning Commission's uh, vote to deny the uh, SUP. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Withrow. Oh, okay. Uh, good evening, Mayor, Council, City Staff. Uh, my name is Juanita Withrow. I live in District 2. Um, I also attended the planning meeting that night and listened to the presentation of the consultant. and. Um, then went over to the store afterwards because I was uh, listening to the other public comments and I thought well I just have to go see what the store is really like and it's very clean very nice store and there as uh, Jim said there was nice teenage girls in there and it was very very pleasant I would let my kids go there but their aisles are so tall unless you're standing right in front of the cash register if you are two aisles over, you can't see anything. And I think there would be a lot of safety issues there. And since our police department has recommended not to issue the license, and I respect the planning commission. They did a lot of research. There was a lot of testimony that night. And I hope you'll support your um, planning commission. Thank you for your time. Good evening, Mayor, City Council, and staff. I attended that um, public that uh, here um, commission meeting, planning commission meeting regarding the dollar store. Um, there was only one commissioner on that whole commission that approved it or wanted it. The rest did not. Um, and it was commissioner from District 1. We don't need more alcohol in this city. As, as the report was given, we're saturated, overly saturated with stores selling alcohol. We don't need any more. And um, from what the council, I understand, is trying to do is elevate the city, not bring in discount stores and cheap stores where you can go buy stuff cheap from Japan, China. We want to elevate. I think a better, better um, thing to bring into Englewood would be a farmer's market. That would be, um, would, would be better served with a farmer's market, fresh vegetables, fresh fruit, fresh everything. But uh, to bring it in a store that sells discount products, and we don't know, you know, I wouldn't know where the meat and all that came from. Um, they'll put a pretty picture on it, but uh, I'm very selective about what I consume and what I wear. So I think people in middle class America and lower income, they're particular about it too. So to bring in a company that um, says toothpaste, they can't make much money off of toothpaste, they can't make, make much money off of other items, uh, it would help if they sell liquor, then that means that prominently that would be their seller. That would be where they make their money. So I implore you to uphold the Planning Commission's decision not to allow them to have a liquor license. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, staff, residents of Inglewood. <clears throat> this idea is uh, about convenience and laziness of the community. It's summertime. Uh, summertime means 4th of July, means alcohol is uh, supposed to flow because people are in good mood because they have more time off from work. This is bad. Like I said, I don't mind if a person is the devil's play shop. Okay, so selling liquor in this area that is already saturated with a lot of liquor stores and places that sell alcohol, lethal and non-lethal. Uh, 
Family Dollar wants to add to uh, a pile of dynamite that's already lit, okay? And if you drink more alcohol that's already there, then what is the purpose but to hurt the community? As we all know, alcohol used in a very irresponsible way leads to bad things, murders, uh, accidents on the road, you know, these things are not good for any community. And I would like to go back to the prohibition days, but this is America. People have the right to drink, and that's fine. <laughs> uh, but like I said, this proposal right here in Inglewood, we have enough alcohol. We don't need dollars, dollar, family dollars to be selling it because it's a convenience for the people in the neighborhood to walk over there and get alcohol to go back to their house. Okay, what's the matter with walking a few more feet or a few more blocks just to get it? Sorry, we are tired of the madness with the alcohol in this city. We have breweries gonna open up. We have places where you're gonna wine taste and beer taste, all this stuff, you know, and I think alcohol is a good way to not have tax dollars for the city, you know, because, I mean, if, if your, your thing for the city is going to be sell alcohol, move. Those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council. My name is Larry Springs. I'm in the 1st District. And what I like to do is I like to talk to you about this particular issue that we have here. I did go online and I pulled up some minutes from the Planning Commission and I'd like to read just a couple of paragraphs in regards to those minutes. On October 5th, 2014, the Planning Commissioners conducted a public hearing for a special use permit number 1192. During the hearing, the public expressed opposition, opposition to granting this request for that the planning commissioners decided not to grant the request for alcohol for that particular location. I want to express to you that we have several vendors that sell alcohol in the community. One directly across the street from this particular site, one on Hardy and La Brea, which is in walking distance, another one less than an eighth of a mile on the west side of the street. So we have a, a flooded concentration of people selling alcohol close to this particular site. Now, what I've done, <clears throat> because this particular gentleman, according to the minutes, indicated that it was a value to the community to sell alcohol, and that was one of the questions that the commissioners had asked, how would this benefit the community by having a license to sell beer and alcohol in your facility? So what I've done as I've gone online to look at some of the other family dollar stores that are in the county of Los Angeles, Orange County. And out of the 18 that I pulled up, none of them sell beer or alcohol. And I have a list right here, Mr. Mayor, and I'd like to give it to you so you can have your staff run these numbers just to verify what I'm saying to you. An example would be, 5311 East Olympic Boulevard in Los Angeles. There's a family dollar store. They don't sell it. Here in Los Angeles at 15, oh, I'm sorry, Slauson at 1955 West Slauson, they don't sell it. I checked Long Beach, they don't sell it. Cesar Chavez Avenue, they don't sell it. Montclair, they don't sell it. Whittier, they don't sell it. Several stores in Whittier. Pomona, I can go on and on and on, Mr. Mayor. And I'd like to leave this with you so your staff can take a look at it and just verify what I've just said. Chairman Springs, I would rather not do that because the council is going to take a vote tonight and to do it based on information the appellant does not have nor has had a chance to rebut would be, seem to be unfair. So 
what, what I'd rather do is not set that up to be a bone of contention that we made a decision based on information they not had an opportunity to, to, to validate. And, and so I'd rather not do that to taint the vote tonight. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right, thank you. Matthew, uh, District 4, Mayor and uh, City Council. <clears throat> First, I'd like to congratulate the Council on having a moratorium. And next, I would hope that you would extend it <clears throat> so that when businesses come to the city, they, all of them are very welcome. <clears throat> but they should know in front that there is, in fact, a moratorium, certain things we don't allow. And I think it would save a lot of people a lot of grief, a lot of money, save the city a lot of time. So I would recommend to extend the moratorium as long as it can legally be extended, you know, without any uh, situation where the city is, uh, can be sued in anything, because people sue about everything. And as long as it is on solid legal grounds, I would hope that this city would extend the moratorium indefinitely. Because here again, the city is on the move, it's going up, and we must have some rules and regulations. Now, everybody has a right to go to the planning commission, they have a right to appeal. That's the process. Now, the uh, planning commission is advisory to you, and it's up to you to decide if it's permanent. So, I would recommend, in addition to this, to save council time, save plenty commission time that the moratorium is in in place and there's no special use permit it's going to be given so thank you very much thank you good evening mr mayor council and staff i'm ted brass proud resident of the city of inglewood long time district two and a 37-year business owner in the city of Inglewood. And I love Inglewood, and I love the, the steps in which it's moving forward in a positive manner. And certainly, I am a business person, and I am always one to welcome businesses and to the opportunity for businesses. But at the same time, businesses that are good for the city of Inglewood. And I'm not against the dollar, family dollar store, but I am, and I will go on record as saying, against the sale of alcohol. We've heard all of the statistics, the numbers, and how to compliance for state, and that staff has done. And certainly, that speaks for itself. But I feel that having additional sale of alcohol to Inglewood, to our communities, when we are moving in a positive manner, is going to take us back. It's a step forward backwards, so we certainly do not need to do that. Now, I understand due process and certainly know what this body is doing. There is an appeal that has to come, so the body has to hear. You can't deny and certainly giving the additional time for the person too, I think it goes, goes beyond in making sure that that's in place. But I feel confident that this body will make the right decision. They've heard the public who's spoken very loud, and certainly they know where they are taking, or where we collectively are taking the city. So I will go on record as saying that I am opposed to the sale of alcohol. I support the Planning Commissioner's recommendation, and I'd like to see us move ahead in bringing some positive. We saw positive light in terms of the young people that came up. Those are the kind of things I enjoy and want to see continue in this city and I support it. So I'm on record as certainly opposing and supporting the Planning Commission's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. My name is Diane Sombrano. As I sat here and heard someone characterize alcohol as a need, I had a funny thought. Wouldn't it be incredible if we had as many bookstores in this community as we have vendors of alcohol? 
Wouldn't it be interesting if we had enough stores in this community that sell educational supplies? But no, someone comes and tells us we need more alcohol. I don't know what planet that would be true on, but I got to tell you, um, I found it personally insulting to suggest that you can come to a community that is already significantly oversaturated and consider telling us it's a need. You know, some of the past decisions of the council have been to get a dollar <coughs> in the general fund sales coffers at any expense. And I will tell you right now, there are some things that simply should not be. This is one of them. And I would hope that you uphold the Planning Commission's decision. And I will tell you that the community will long remember if you do not. My name is Alfonso Parker, Jr., Vietnam veteran, 66-67, conscious objector. I was sitting back there listening to the subject, and I wasn't going to say anything. But it's a very important issue. Inglewood is blowing up, as the young people say. Scientology, a forum, and now we want a big box liquor store, all from all over the country. You don't understand what's going on around you. All these mom and pops that we still have, because they're going out of business, right? But they're trying to survive to create local jobs. These big boxes don't do that. They pull them from back east, transfer them all over. The, the reason why I'm bringing this up, uh, sometimes I wonder, this is old Chicago uh, boiler room politics, because you guys come up here like bobble hands. Um, Mr. Padillo, Councilman Padillo, I'm not in your district, but uh, I accidentally heard a rumor. I would appreciate it if you address the council as a whole. Okay. Well, my question is to him directly. Well, just please address. Why we had a rumor, a uh, uh, statement, some people I know, that Inglewood is a done deal in the next five years okay, okay, for an know, NFL we're, football we're, team. We're, we're now we're off the topic. Well, no, it's we're, not because no, it has relevance to no, what's no, coming no, in the excuse community. Excuse me, Alfonso. Hmm. It's either going to be to talk about whether we uphold the uh, or deny the uh, well, decision by the pl by the planning commission on well, I think we should. I think we should oppose this particular one in the neighborhood because. Uh, Inglewood's going to blow up in five years with much more than the form already is, is lunacy out there just every day when there's something there. Now we want to start bringing in other large entities. Before it's over with, Ingles, Inglewood's going to be uh, with the rich and the famous and we're all going to be pushed out, property owners and everybody because of their expansion. So I'm, I think you should, uh, I don't own a piece of property but I live in here. I pay my taxes when I when I buy stuff. I think you should uh, deny this. Thank you. They're looking far ahead. They have projections you don't have. Yeah, for Austin. Uh, Council Mayor, I want to uphold the, uh, the decision with the uh, commissioners. I must say the reason why I agree with uh, everyone. It's not because of threatening you all or nothing like that. All of that, none of that works anyway. You all are human beings, and you're going to do what's right for this city. So threatening you all is not even worth all that. I'm going to come to you direct and say one thing. I must agree with most of the speakers. I've been to several states. Family Dollar is a dollar family store. I have never once walked in one of them and saw any liquor, no place, no stores. So I don't know what, uh, why he wants to bring it to Inglewood, maybe because they think we are so easy to bring in liquor license and stuff like that. I don't understand why they chose our city 
we know we're moving in the right path, but this is not the type of family store we need with liquor. Also, Mr. Matthew, I mean, uh, someone mentioned the dollar store. They're already selling beer and wine. They always have. 99 cents, so always have sold beer and wine and Dollar Tree. So therefore, we really don't need no more liquor store, no more liquor in the, in the city. And uh, one other thing I wanted to mention, if he's, if they're not pretend, well, how we say, if they're not going to advertise that they sell beer and wine, why do they want beer and wine to sell? Simple. Thank you. You said, you said they don't advertise beer and wine, so why do they want it to sell? Was that what you said? Yeah. All right. Okay. That's profound. My name is Willie A.G., and I live in the beautiful city of Inglewood. And I'm going to make this short and pretty. I would like, as a resident of 54 years, the beautiful city of Inglewood, I would like the council to uphold commissioner's decision. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We'll close the uh, public hearing. And uh, since it's your district, Mr. Morales, you be the first to comment. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. What's that? I thought it was 1,000 South. What's on the but east it's, side? it's on the east side, but in my district, it doesn't turn into. Can we discuss this later? But it is the city, so I can talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, there are no bobbleheads here. <laughs> um, you know, it's here before us. Obviously, it's, a, it's an issue that, that we all recognize as something sensitive. Uh, it, you know, I have to say that, you know, most of the comments that come our way, uh, you know, tend to infer that we've made a decision one way or another and that's why it's in front of us. Truth is, you know, our process is so great that when they got turned down in planning, there's an opportunity for any, any applicant to appeal it. Uh, that's our democratic way and that's great. That's great. Uh, also gives us an opportunity to comment. Uh, as far as uh, everything was spoken about in terms of the moratorium statewide, uh, that, you know, there shouldn't be one liquor store for after, you know, uh, per 2,500 residents. This particular one is like one for every, uh, just a little over 1,000. Um, you know, the, the applicant made uh, their point uh, on dollar being a decent store. Uh, you know, he mentions low profit margins. Truth is, uh, you know, I've seen, uh, we've seen a number of dollar stores open up in the last couple of years, which, which makes me believe that there's, there's quite a bit of profit here in the city of Inglewood for the dollar stores. Um, none, none of which, uh, you know, other than, you know, parking lots may, you know, I have gotten some complaints of some of the ones on Century, the parking lot being just not maintained. But other than that, you know, it's just a, 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 kind of a small store for the neighborhood. Um, now, in regards to what they're trying to, to get a permit for, which is the alcohol sales, truth is nobody knows our community more than, than the residents who spoke and us up here. You'll probably hear just a, a lot of different ways of us saying the same thing, um, how we understand our community and basically how certain things uh, don't fit uh, any longer. And, you know, alcohol sales being one of them. You know, uh, there's plenty of places that people can go and purchase what they need. Uh, if, they, if somebody wants to drink, trust me, they're not gonna, you don't have to break your brain here to figure out where to go, unfortunately. You know, our flexibility, we will save for opportunities such as a decent restaurant coming in that wants to have, uh, you know, be able to offer spirits, you know, a sit down with waiters. That's where our flexibility will be used. You know, that's why the state offers it and says, hey, you know, in a local jurisdiction, you can do that. In this particular instant, to bring in just another facility to cross the street and, and buy alcohol is something that I know uh, none of us will support. I, I obviously will not support it. We'll be upholding, uh, you know, the, the Planning Commission's denial. 
Um, I appreciate being the first one to be allowed to speak, Mayor. I really do, uh, just because it is my district. Uh, but the truth is, I, I have no doubt that every council member here, including the mayor, understand where we're headed as a city. And this is just an opportunity, uh, you know, for everyone, including, you know, incoming clients and applicants to understand, you know, that we understand our city and that, you know, uh, that's how we feel about, about alcohol sales in a particular establishment like that. So thank you, Mayor. Okay. And Councilor Franklin, since you're close to, <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you go second. Well, thank you, Mayor, but I'm not. But, thank you. <laughs> but I am going on record to apologize to my colleague because council members know their district, so I apologize, colleague. Uh, but, but specifically, why we're here has to deal with a business trying to give us the business. And I came out of the food industry, and I clearly know the profit margins on how you take a loss leader, which you talk about the toothbrushes, to another item where you make up the margin. So that's a no-brainer for me. What I was expecting to hear from Mr. Rawlings had to do specifically with the concern of wanting this special use permit. And he failed to meet that threshold when it came to identifying the outreach on how it's going to benefit this community and this city. I also take an exception when he misrepresents the city staff when he said the staff made the recommendation of approval. <coughs> staff does presentations. It's the commissioners that make the, the way of the evidence for consideration as to whether or not they will approve or disapprove. So I want to make sure that's clarified. The other burden of proof that fell upon the, uh, the um, applicant was also with the recommendation by the city of Inglewood's city, city attorney's department, or the attorney's department, where the burden of proof, the applicant had the burden to show proof of convenience and necessity. And when we had staff provide us not one, not two, but six licenses already exist in the track area, clearly does not identify that that is a necessity. It also identified that, that the attorney's office recommended that the applicant should be reaching out and making a reasonable effort of getting community input. Well, I think you heard at the commissioner meeting and you've heard here tonight the, the input of the community which says no. And then finally, I will identify that the applicant also stated that the standard, that their standard offerings in the store is uh, alcohol and they indi indicate it for incidental sales. But when you read the, the staff report or the minutes of the planning commission, it identifies that the target market, and you also saw the graphing, was females and seniors. But the market that they're seeking is males and they highlight it particularly regarding sporting events. And then also out of the, the the staff report shows that Commissioner Terry Coleman asked them approximately how many stores you have in the state of California, 200 to 250, and that he was, that the applicant, Mr. Rawlings, wasn't even certain as to of those number of stores, how many of them are currently selling beer and wine, and he guessed approximately 10 to 20 percent. So clearly, I have to weigh the, the burden upon the applicant who failed to meet that threshold on how it's going to benefit this city, benefit this community, and more importantly, our job has collectively been to help suppress the amount of crime that has escalated uh, by the use of consumption of alcohol. And so there's enough of them around, in fact, they've already talked about there's one just um, across the street and one just down, down the street all within walking distance, and the crime reports have gone up regarding in that particular track. And so I clearly am supporting my, my colleague and, and hopefully the, the uh, board of the, this commission, this council also echoes uh, in unison about not opposing, not supporting uh, the recommendation of the appeal, but honor the, the will of the planning commission. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilman Dodson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, to me, this is a no brainer. After 20 years on that planning commission, what are your citizen here in the city of Inglewood? I've always believed that 
we have to make good decisions on what kind of businesses we have here and what kind of products they sell to our community. I believe that the commissions did their job, they did their research, and they came up with a decision that's best for this community. I believe that to my heart. Everyone who sits on that commission, most of them were there, some of them were there when I was there. So I know they did their homework. I'm like everybody else in here. I think we have enough liquor being sold in our city. We don't need any more. So I, I stand with the Planning Commission recommendation and uh, that's the way I'll vote. Thank you. Councilman Padilla. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first off, I just want to say that, uh, you know, th that store does serve a purpose in the community. I, you know, they, they supply stuff that our, uh, many of our community members uh, need. Uh, I don't believe that by having alcohol there, it's going to change anything. It certainly isn't going to improve anything as far as uh, uh, I'm concerned as it relates to the overall impact in our community uh, that the business is you know the, the, the company's been in business since 1959 7900 stores you know all over the place uh, we want them to be a success here in Inglewood uh, but we are not going to or at least I'm not going to move forward with any of the alcohol sales stuff there I think they're they're doing a fine enough job I, I, I went to the store I've talked to some of the uh, I've had people actually come to me uh, knowing that we we're going to be uh, uh, discussing this tonight and voice their uh, opposition. I did not have one person uh, in favor of it. Tonight we had, I think I counted 12 folks come up and talk about uh, opposing this. Uh, and so uh, for me, I, I say that, you know, we, we want this business to continue to be a success, but without the alcohol license. I am. Um I'm not one that criticizes a, a business um, because of the business that they are, you know. Businesses come into the city because someone has land to lease, someone has a business, they come to an agreement, and that business is here. As long as it's zoned for that, that's what it will be. That's just America. But when it comes to this issue of alcohol, um, it, I come up in public safety, we're very statistics conscious. and. Um, as a mayor, I'm still statistics conscious, but now it's about miles of road paved, miles of water lines replaced, um, number of houses insulated. And this issue of the ratio of alcohol outlets to the population is significant because it says what businesses think about our community. They think that we're great consumers of alcohol. And I don't think we're any more consumers than anyone else. Um, I'm sympathetic to businesses that have to meet the bottom line, but I, it simply ends at saying that we need to sell alcohol to compete. I'm sure the margin on alcohol is not that much more significant than it is on toothpaste. It's just a statement of how you feel this will sell in our community. And I want to tell everyone loud and clear that's not the way we are, that's not the way we're headed. I don't believe that we've approved any new liquor licenses unless they were for restaurants in the time I've been on the council. We've been very, very concerted about not expanding the number of licenses in the in this city. Um, tomorrow morning at 11 a.m., the ABC is going to officially post a notice of revocation of the liquor license for Jen's Liquor on Crenshaw. And that's due to a lot of hard work by the police department and planning over the years to get rid of a, a location that has been a long problem for crime and violence. And so, there's just no, there's just no way. There's nothing against the dollar store. That's not it. It's just what we are going to be, what we aspire to be, and where we're going. And where we're going is going to be to reduce this concentration of alcohol outlets in the city. That's just the way it's going to be. So, um, you're welcome. So it wasn't even necessary to threaten us, but, uh, <laughs> but I want to tell you that we are definitely united in this uh, quest to upgrade our city. So I'm going to vote to uphold the um, commission's uh, ruling as well. And I want to thank uh, Mr. Uh, Springs for his testimony 
although I couldn't accept your document. Um, so I'll move adoption. Second. I'm holding the Planning Commission's decision. Second. Madam Clerk. Council Members Dotson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Franklin. Aye. Mayor Buds. Aye. Madam Clerk, what's the next schedule matter? The next schedule matter is a public hearing to consider the Inglewood Housing Authority uh, fiscal year 2014-15 annual plan. Has notice of the hearing been given in a time, form, and manner as required by law? And do you have the affidavit on file? Notice has been given and affidavit is on file. How many communications been received on the matter? No communications have been received. City Manager, is there a staff report? Yes, Ms. Angie Pacheco, Housing Manager, will give the staff report. Welcome, Ms. Pacheco. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members and staff. We're here. Um, it is recommended for the Chairman and the Housing Authority members to conduct a public hearing to consider the Inglewood Housing Authority and to accept its 2014-15 annual plan. Section 511 of the United States Public Housing Reform Act of 1988 requires public housing agencies to prepare an annual plan outlining program implementation and strategies for the upcoming fiscal year and conduct a meeting and resident advisory RAB to receive input on its programs for participants and in general the feedback from the RAB meeting is used to prepare the annual plan and we did invite uh, 25 about 2,500 participants which included landlords and our residents for the program and that includes our residents of Inglewood and our ports that are in the area. The annual plan provides information about um, the Inglewood Housing Authority's participants, programs, and services, immediate operations and management. It also includes strategies for handling operational matters and addresses, property owners, and landlord concerns and needs. And in reference to getting information about this, since May 2000. 14, the annual plan has been available for public review in the Housing Authority's office in the Inglewood Main Library. So if anybody's interested in getting a copy, we have it available. I'd like to elaborate a little bit of information from the annual plan, if I may, to give some feedback on, on some of the comments that were earlier said. We do administer 1,002 vouchers for the federal government and 516 additional ones of ports of other um, families that are moving into the city of Inglewood, which include um, the majority from the county of Los Angeles and the city of um, Los Angeles. Uh, we do have other counties throughout the, the country, but those are the, the main ones that we work with the most. We, um, we did close our waiting list already. We had a 14-year waiting list that we were able to close out. And in addition to that, we added on um, all of the residents that we had in two other programs, which included our homeless program and our TBRA uh, tenant rental assistance program, so that we were able to assist the most needy, which included the elderly, the disabled, and the veterans in the community. Um, before we open up our waiting list in September again, we've been able to service that. We currently have closed that, and I believe we were able to look at about 113 residents in our community that we are trying to serve uh, for the Section 8 program. A little bit about the financial uh, part. Uh, the the Inglewood Housing, uh, Housing Authority targets low income limits uh, for all its new admissions. The proof of the applicant families must ensure that the Inglewood Housing Authority will meet income targeting requirements. And the Section 8 waiting list is currently closed. However, we have been working in conjunction with our other programs, um, especially to prevent homelessness. Uh, in reference to financial resources, the Housing Choice Voucher administers about $15 million a year in reference to its Section 8 program, and that it includes its administrative fees at about $1.2 million, and the rest goes directly to payments to the participants. The affordable housing is a component that's been added on to the Section 8 program as part of the Housing Authority, and we anticipate um, our revenues to be at 437,000 for the year, and we have bonds at $37.6 million that we administer, reserves at 2,200. So we look at administering uh, $38 million for the affordable housing program. So in total, 15 and the 38 million. 
There is other information about goals that we have for the city. So if there's anything else that you'd like me to elaborate on, that concludes my presentation. The question is how many Section 8 uh, clients we serve? 1,002. And from the federal government and about 516 at this time that are coming in from other areas. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anyone that wants to make public input? I absolutely want to say thank you for giving the report. It didn't hurt very much to actually have a report, did it? Isn't it nice to know that after 14 years of having a backlog, it's been cleared up? Sometimes it seems that when we ask questions, it always seems to be considered a threat by someone. I suggested that votes would long be remembered. Interested in how it got turned around. I want to thank you for a really good report. I appreciate it. Thank you. I don't get that at all. Well, at all. Uh, Gil Matthew, uh, District 4. I have just a, a couple of questions. Uh, concerning uh, Section 8, when you call, you get a recording saying that uh, we no longer uh, accept any applications. Is that correct? Now, also, it's been... Uh, reported that the property owners in Inglewood are opting out of Section 8. In other words, I think it's uh, now they renew renewing one year at a time. And then uh, the apartment is vacant from the Section 8. They're no longer participating in it. And I have concern for that because what's going to happen to the residents that's been in this community over the years and no longer Section 8 housing is available. And they have vouchers, but nowhere to go. <clears throat> so if what I'm saying is correct or is happening, I would like a response to that. How is that going to be corrected? Because being poor doesn't mean that you need uh, certain rights or certain privileges. And being broke also is not a handicap. But you should not be broken. That's the word, see. And we must understand that for the, there, from the grace of God, there goes I. And if this economy keeps going like it is, a lot of folks are going to be walking in those shoes. <clears throat> so I would just like some, some comments on that because it's getting to be a critical situation where even the state is recognizing it. And all of the monies that they're taking from the successor agency, you know where it's going into? Affordable housing. Thank you. Ms. Pacheco, are we having a big problem with people opting out of the Section 8 provider of housing? We've always um, done our annual contracts with the landlords. There was some that, that will do that, but not very many. And um, because we have a real big portability that comes into it, Inglewood is one of the highest portability throughout the Los Angeles area. So that means that actually we are servicing people from outside of Inglewood coming into becoming a wood residents and landlords are taking them. So the reality is is that we have more than our share of Section 8. We have we expand our population. Correct. And we do not have a, an issue right now on, right. on housing. And, and see, that, that's a problem when, when people come up and they, they define a problem that doesn't exist and then talk about how it is a problem. And it, we really don't have the problem that he articulated. Is that correct? Correct. At this time, we do not. Mm -hmm. So you can rest assured, Mr. Matho, it's okay. Go ahead, Ms. Ford. Thank you. Good evening to all of you. I just have a question. For those that have Section 8 vouchers, um, if your voucher is for the city of Inglewood, can you use it in the county of Los Angeles? And can other cities come into the city of Inglewood and use 
an Inglewood voucher. Do you understand case? what I'm saying? In other words, <laughs> is that the voucher? Case? I can answer that question. Um, that's, what by that's called portability. Sorry? That's what she meant when she said portability. Portabil okay. So we have yeah. 516 that we administer from other locations outside of the city of Inglewood that are Inglewood residents. And yes, you may take your voucher anywhere in the United States and in Puerto Rico for um, assistance for Section 8. So you're stating that if you have a Section 8 voucher, it can be used in anywhere of the county of Los Angeles. Correct. States. Well, I heard the United States, in but I- In Puerto Rico. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm Correct. pretty surprised that- You do that, have to be that. accepted by a housing authority to be able to do that. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ford. Good evening again, with regard to the Section 8 uh, issue. I was wondering if, if we might uh, uh, help uh, some of the people who are less fortunate by um, bringing on, uh, 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 you know, uh, allowing these rents not to be raised so high, you know, to put a, uh, a you know, stop these landlords from uh, raising their rents so high that uh, some of these people uh, uh, can't uh, afford it. You know, uh, you, you said that uh, the Section 8 people, uh, uh, they don't have any more, or they're not accepting any uh, Section 8. Uh, uh, we need, I think, maybe to uh, uh, let people know. It was suggested that uh, maybe when the people call in, they just uh, say they're not accepting it. Uh, maybe it would be helpful to some of those people to let them know when uh, it might be opened and, and uh, how they might uh, be uh, helped. Mayor Butts, I think that uh, <coughs> you were asking uh, why uh, it was suggested that uh, uh, someone might uh, consider a, a threat uh, with regard to the issue of, of uh, uh, that we spoke to with regard to the public hearing. And I think that uh, it, it was suggested that, uh, you know, maybe uh, uh, something that was going to be long remembered by people could be a threat. Uh, that was the only thing that I was suggesting that I would, uh, you know, let all people in the city know, you know, who was voting negatively. But it wasn't uh, okay. met as a threat to, to anyone. And, the, and I think that we all have that right to, like I said earlier, to expose, you know, to, of to expound. Of course you them. do. And, and uh, I think, I just wanted to, to say that to you because you were wondering why uh, that was I said. was not, I was just making a comment. I see, thank Free you. Free speech sir. and all that. Thank you, sir. All right. Good afternoon, Mayor, Council. I want to ask some questions, uh, Mayor. Um, the comment was made about uh, the portability of vouchers. Now, at one time, were we accepting portabilities, or did we have to stop it at one time because we were so far in debt? Did we have to stop this or something like that? You, I'm not clear on that, but I know that we do accept vouchers from other cities. I think as long as I've been on the council that we've accepted vouchers from other cities, Ms. Pacheco. We welcome vouchers from other cities is an administrative advantage to us to do that and to bring uh, families that we do background checks into the city of Inglewood that, that are um, looking for housing in this area because it's affordable to, and it is a very desirable area throughout the county and the city. It's vouchers of portability. And yes, you are correct. There was a time when they would have been the first chosen for them to lose their vouchers because they were not the Ingle the original Inglewood residents participants and they were ports and we couldn't afford to pay them but that has been resolved and is not a current issue oh great also um, uh, it was another comment said I think we need clarifying on you know I know it's a lot of people that need help nowadays people getting laid off and everything but is it correct to say that section 8 is not is government uh, federal funded is, is that correct to say it is not city funded, that it comes from uh, It doesn't come from the general fund. It comes from the government, right? Well, we are the government. I mean, but, uh, but, but, uh, yes. another level You know of what I'm trying to say. I absolutely so. do. 
Uh, yeah. So can we say that? And can we also, could I also ask you this? When people think that the rent is being paid and all this, I think in people's mind, they believe that the rent is like $30 or $40. Uh, could you please specify <laughs> the way that the money is being paid and how the federal is not paying as much as they used to? I think a lot of people thinking that this is what's going on, like it used to be, okay. you remember? Uh, I don't know that one size fits all, but it's a subsidy based on the size of the dwelling unit and so much is paid for a two bedroom, so much is paid for a three bedroom. There is a contribution by the tenant, but it's a means tested contribution. And so, yes, it is a subsidy to help people afford housing. But it's not being, say if you rent 1300 a month. <laughs> okay. I'm just trying to clarify this to some of the people that that really want, needs to know this. And if your rent is 1150 or 1200 a month, it used to be that federal, the government, paid more of the portion of the rent. This is what I'm trying to get at. It has a subsidy diminished over time. We can give you a little bit of statistics on that. Uh, from this almost 1600 vouchers that we administer, at least 33% of those are working families in the city of Inglewood and they contribute income and they pay 30 percent of the rent based on their income the about 60 percent of them are um, disabled and elderly families that live in housing and again they pay 30 percent of their income we have uh, less than 70 participants that have very low income and or no income at all so we encourage uh, families to at least have some income or be able to find financial assistance so that they can have uh, a portion that they pay. Very little amount is not paid. Um, we pay over two, some families pay, see about $200 is probably the average that the family is a minimum. A lot of families pay between six, seven, eight, eight hundred or $1,000. So it's based on the income. All right. Unless there's any further public comment, we'll close public comment. Um, I'll move uh, approval. Second. Mayor, I'd like to comment. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Ms. Pacheco, if you would be so kind to address the goals and objectives with reference to the fraud recoupment measures, because you identified there's currently a number of clients that have been found at fault. Mm -hmm. Uh, or I should say participants at fault, <clears throat> and there's been a payment plan structured, if I'm correct. And that the area of concern I raise is that it indicated that in the, the fiscal year of 2013, there have been no collections through the date of this plan from the state income tax returns. So I'm concerned with reference to your objectives and goals of how we're going to recoup this overpayment that what happens in defaults okay the um, and you're talking about page three uh, the tax the tax board there was an error there that um, didn't go in on time and that's why it resulted in that situation that has been resolved and um, we are doing that on a yearly basis within the city to try to do the collections. When I came on board, we had over a million dollars worth of fraud. So we've gotten it down to these numbers. And um, right now we have uh, families that are on long-term payment agreements that are at about $84,000. And those are the ones that go to the tax credit. If we never collect those uh, funds, those are probably the ones that are difficult to collect if people are not paying taxes. And then the other one, of families that we have on payment agreements, those are currently on our, our program, that's close to $20,000, and they're required to make monthly payments or they can lose their voucher if okay. they don't so, do that. So there is a method Correct. that if you don't pay, then you're subject to lose your voucher. Correct. And so they are on a payment plan now, but prior to 2013, we had this million dollar outstanding uh, overpayment. Correct, and it was, about a, ten, it was about a 10 year, uh, a 10-year list of, of cases that we hadn't collected on. And then I just want to commend you and your staff because 
we've had this fight with the Los Angeles City from the Porto to Porto and them willing to transfer the dollars with the client or participant to come into the city of Inglewood. And so holding that good fight, even having to deal with the federal government to be our um, referee while we're trying to work that out. And so thank we're 100% in compliance with each other, thank with you. the county and the city. Thank you. All right. I have um, a call for the question. Madam Clerk. I have a motion. I yeah, just, you have a motion. Yes. And a second. Okay. Madam Clerk. Council members Dotson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Franklin. Aye. Uh, and uh, in the absence of the mayor, I'll carry forward with the meeting. No objection. No objection. And uh, we'll, uh, items will be acted upon as a whole unless called upon by a council member. Move items three through eight. Second. Madam Clerk. Council members Dotson, Aye. Padilla, Aye. Mora, um, Franklin, Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Morales. Aye. Uh, DR1. Staff report recommending adoption of a resolution approving the authority to assign funds, balance, and in accordance with the Governmental Accounting Standards Board Statement Number 54. Move adoption. Is that moving one and two? One and two. All second, Madam Clerk. Council members Dotson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Franklin. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Morales. Aye. DR2 and H4. And that, uh, you want to call to order? It's a, As to a, the housing. A quorum is present. Thank you. Uh, staff report recommending adoption of a resolution amending the fiscal year 2013 14 housing section 8 and community development block grant housing department budget to transfer $71,163.49 from the affordable housing revenues and expenditures, salaries, and benefit account to the special expense account. Move adoption. adoption. Second. Second. Madam Clerk. Council and agency members, <coughs> Dodson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Franklin. Aye. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, uh, chairman. Aye. Chairman, aye. Mayor Pro Tem. Pro aye. Chairman, Pro. <laughs> <laughs> I feel more special. Morales. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, aye. Uh, recess the City Council and uh, well, we did oh, that already. Oh, so we, we did we're HR good. four. Okay, so we will move on. Uh, we will not recess. We'll move on with the council meeting A one. Okay. Thank you. As to CS one, there was a closed session regarding a conference with labor negotiators regarding um, the one bargaining group SEIU Service Employees International Union. The negotiators for the city was uh, the city manager Artie Fields and Jack Hoffman, the chief negotiator. As to that item, discussions were held and no further action was taken at this time. As to A2, oral reports are none from the city attorney's office. Thank you. And the mayor will take over. We are CM1. CM1. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Every a resident um, this week will be receiving in their mail via U.S. Postal Service a beautiful, colorful um, community guide that will discuss a number of different programs and services that the city will be offering over the summer, especially recreation programs. It will also have numbers, important numbers for departments in it. Um, this is special because we haven't done this since the 1990s because of budget issues, but we found a way to print this document and get it out to the public without using any general fund money. So I want to thank the Parks and Rec Department for doing that. In addition, the city is partnering, partnering with the Los Angeles County Museum of Art to present Inglewood Art Film Lab. The uh, lab will open up on Friday, June 27th, and it will go until July 27th. The June 27th, first day, on, that's a Friday night, um, will occur right out on our south lawn. And I invite everyone to come out between 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. And um, we'll have um, bands and uh, movies. And um, there'll be an opportunity for kids to learn how to create um, their own videos um, using oral histories. And lastly, um, free lunches are now being given out at our, most of our parks for youth under 18 years old. And they're um, not only at our parks, but in a number of different um, uh, locations in the city, such as the Inglewood South Side Christian Church, um, Lock Haven Community Center, and um, the Inglewood Main Library. And that's my compliments for the night. Thank you. 
CC1, Madam City Clerk. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to report out our success that we had our our women's conference and men were able to come they did show up <laughs> and it was on this past Friday and it was a huge success there was many breakout sessions there was so much information eons of information that was given and um, people walked away with a lot they were truly truly excited I want to thank Alex councilman Alex Padilla for attending that event um, it was truly a blessing to have you there. I want to thank the mayor because he learned more about what happened and he had such great comments and he promised he would be there next year. So we're, I'm going to hold him to it. <laughs> and uh, also, Mayor, I would like to close the meeting in memory of Muriel Franklin Glass. Yesterday I attended her funeral in Stockton, California. She used to be a resident here in Southern California, um, very, very close and dear friend of mine who passed away at the young age, as Councilman Franklin would say, 81. Thank you. That's the end of my closing remarks. Thank you. Uh, no treasurer's uh, comments. Uh, any person who wants to address the council on any matter connected with city business but not elsewhere considered on the agenda may do so at this time. Mayor Bustle, Council, Leroy Fisher again. I was uh, at a meeting at Hollywood Park oh, the other day where they talked about uh, having funds now to begin the uh, housing project. And I uh, said uh, to Mr. McCollum that I was certainly uh, pleased to hear that because we in the city have been uh, hearing a lot of things about uh, maybe that property was going to use for a uh, stadium of some sort <clears throat> and uh, I, I, didn't, I, I personally don't think that that would be uh, something positive for this city. I think that uh, having the houses uh, there as a tax base and, and uh, having uh, the businesses that are being proposed uh, is a wonderful thing and I uh, don't know where they uh, are getting this money but they say they have it and I hope that uh, they do in fact and I hope they proceed that way. One thing that uh, came up there, though, was uh, the four acres that uh, the city had been given by uh, Hollywood Park, and that four acres was supposed to be used for a community uh, building. Uh, it was said uh, by Mr. McCollum again at uh, Century Heights uh, visit that I was there. He said that uh, we, the city, didn't have the money to move forward with that four acres. So uh, they were going to turn it over to the uh, school district, maybe. But maybe because of redevelopment and money that we owe, uh, the state might uh, be entitled to that property. You know, I'm here tonight to ask you them, uh, just to throw out a, a, a thought, that maybe uh, if we contacted uh, LA Metro YMCA, maybe we could uh, consider using those four acres for a YMCA. I just throw that to you all, and I hope you heard what I said, uh, that uh, maybe you could contact LA Metro YMCA. I think that would be a wonderful thing because it would be a place for the kids, for seniors, and also for a, uh, uh, a community uh, use. Uh, I, I will say once again, uh, and, and I'm going to ask you, Mayor Butts, if I go over, if I might have some time to expound on this. but. Uh, you know, I, I said to beginning that uh, we don't need two officers here uh, to, uh, you know, if, if, if there's a problem, they're right across the way and we can call them and they can be here uh, quickly. We have problems in the city, in the streets, and uh, we need those taken care of. Some months ago, I uh, brought to you them all that uh, there was one of our officers that was uh, in a barber shop getting his hair cut. Uh, in uniform. I don't know uh, what uh, ever happened of that because it was never uh, brought up again or nobody, nobody ever said what the chief said about it or whatever. But, you know, I say to you all that we have problems and you all know that it would be better served for those officers to be out in the street uh, protecting uh, the residents and the business of this city. So I just wanted to bring those few thoughts to you. And thank you all. 
Thank you, Mr. Fisher. My name is Alfonso Parker Jr. <clears throat> I'm a Vietnam veteran. 6667, conscious objector. Everybody thought I was just talking out the side of my neck. They're wearing you out with everybody throwing on their cell source today. VA, private health care, lawmakers, criminal inquiries, VA, FBI, criminal probe. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, you have to wait till they stick their nasty heads up. It's not the VA. The VA are just the bounty hunters. Your congressmen, your presidents, commander in chief, secretary of defense, secretary of state, BFW, all of them. This American veterans are doing this to us. The VA only follows orders. You don't do nothing when it comes to the military without orders. You can sit till the cows come home. If you don't have orders, you don't do nothing. They're not the culprit. They're trashing your people's lives. NSA was created, June 47, special ops, to trash the new peacetime draft veterans. She birthed the CIA, the mother of the CIA, September 47. She taught them well, and they go out, I don't know if it's male or female, but it's nasty, and how much they get caught, I figure it's a male, because women are slick, so it can't be a female. But the point is, they are rogue oper operation, always have been. As I speak, they've moved you into a new trash heap of assassination of your own veterans. They grandfather claws, all the others, including veterans, Korean veterans, into this new stuff happening to Iraq and Afghan veterans. They closed down the largest group, which is the veterans of California. We have the largest group of veterans. The nearest one to us is less than 50, maybe 51 percent of what we have, which is Florida. The next is Texas. They picked Phoenix as the smallest with 40 deaths. If you take that 40 deaths time, the number of veterans in California Front veterans, it would go through the roof. The FBI getting in on it. They are part of the problem. They all have been. I have meetings every Thursday night, 79, Chukos Youth Justice Coalition, 1137 West Boulevard, just off the corner. Redondo, I'm sorry, just off the corner of West Boulevard. Come there. Bring the trash, everything they gave you. Even their trash is another man's treasure. I can dissect your medical records. I can dissect, I was a company clerk. I can dissect your accounts, how they trash in your records. Accountability, finance, come see me. I'm good at what I do. I told you once I can find a pimp on the NASA behind in a haystack. Come see me. I hope they gave you something. I don't care if it's trash, bring it. If they gave you toe jam, bring it. Let's blow these suckers off the water. We are American soldiers. Our own don't get to do us. Thank you, Alfonso. Larry Springs, a longtime resident of District 1. I want to commend the mayor and the city council for a job well done here in the city with the Opening of the forum, we have a beautiful site in the city. I do have a complaint. My complaint is Pinkai, the street Pinkai. As we travel down Pinkai going east, leaving the fabulous forum, we have an eyesore on the south side of the street. I'm not sure who owns that property, but it needs to be cleaned up. Now, a portion of that property belongs to the city. Mr. Springs, they've made a commitment to clean it up by the 30th of this month. <laughs> I just wanted you to know that. So I, my complaint is valid then? Oh, it's extremely valid. Okay. It looks so terrible. But I don't, I don't want, I didn't want you to cut your You didn't want me to keep on going, I, you know, it's going to be done. Right? You know, like, you're, I was, you were getting, you were getting to it, right? Going, I was on a roll. You were revving it up and I was I on a roll, Mr. Mayor. let you know. I was on a roll. Okay, my, I'm, I want to I want to find out about the food trucks that are going to be coming into the city during the summer months. Is that something that's going to be going on? That's my, one of my questions. Are you talking about on Market Street? Yes, sir. We hope so. Right. 
Mr. Mayor, Council, my name is Joseph Texer. I'm asking the council to remove James Butts' council chair and to end all business with Inwood today because the last time I spoke here, both Mayor Butts and Willie Brown deliberately deceived the public. At that meeting, during the public comments on agenda items, Mayor Butts again violated meeting rules by interrupting Mr. Matthews' comments without cause just because Butts couldn't control himself and be quiet. Then I spoke endorsing a warrant register payment to the LA Times. But James Butts depends on Willie Brown's paper to hide his misconduct. So after I endorsed the Times, Butts just couldn't control himself. He violated the rules again by letting one of the sycophants promote Inglewood Today, which wasn't on the agenda. The mayor later let this same person curse at the public and use homophobic slurs at this podium. In just six minutes, Butts violated two meeting rules and allowed cursing just because he couldn't control himself and his supporters. However, when I pointed out from the audience that Inglewood today was not on the agenda and that Butts was violating the rules of the meetings, Butts claimed that I was out of control. Not him, he didn't do anything wrong. What a hypocrite. If Butts doesn't want his critics to violate the rules, then he and his cronies shouldn't constantly violate the rules. The mayor never took responsibility for his repeated violations of the rules. Instead, because I prote protested Butts' blatant and ongoing violations of the rules for his benefit and calling him a punk, a petty gangster for doing so, Butts deceived the public saying that his training told him that I was doing something that was irrational and that this might be cause to have me classified as a threat. However, Butts was lying or incompetent because my training, being a locally certified, state licensed, and nationally registered therapist who regularly works with patients with PTSD, who are suicidal, even those in locked units, my training tells me that no one can be classified under 5150 just because someone else claims they're irrational. If it was, Mayor Butts would have been locked up years ago. A 5150 can only occur when someone is an immediate threat to themselves or others or so gravely disabled that they can't care for themselves, period. The mayor just lied to the public so that his flunky, Willie Brown, could repeat the mayor's defamatory claim in Brown's paper, which he did. Then Willie Brown came up and lied to the public, helping the mayor's defamation. Brown actually told the public that that day I jumped out of a bush to videotape him, a lie, and I defy Brown to come up here and say on video that he was being literal about that, because of course Brown was lying. And Brown said that he was concerned because I had documents that showed where he lived, that he didn't live in Inglewood. But Brown knows he's being sued for libel, that a judge said that he's probably going to lose, and that means that my lawyer and I need to know where he lives, what property he owns, and how much is worth, so when I win the case of libel against him, I can get my money from him. Thank you, Mr. Tick, Sarah. It's always enjoyable. Ms. Ford? When I was here last, um, hi, my name is Felicia Ford, and I'm in the first district. When I was here last, and I, you know, when people address their agendas, I don't address what they address to you, but when it affects me and the residents of the city, I have to comment. The hour was then and the hour is now. You can no longer come here and attack the mayor of this city. Mayor Butts, James T. Butts Jr. is the mayor of this city. We have watched his ethical, respectful behavior as a mayor. I have not found anyone other than those that seem to have hate that come here to just not say kind things about the mayor that represents all of us, not just himself, but the whole city. I actually came here to say to you, I want all of you, and I'm going to speak at other city council, is to help the President Barack Obama of the United States. He has his hands full at this particular time. And all the heads of states, local, at all level, if you can build a building that's so high tech and beautiful and spend billions and millions of dollars, then you can sit down in a conference room, in a table, wherever, 
to sit down and figure out how you can help the President of the United States through this crisis. Because the VA situation is a cesspool of a mess that he didn't bring. And we have issues with the war that we don't want to go to. I will say again for the last time, and hear me, don't come to this city council anymore and attack anyone at this Adidas. I asked you respectfully, do not. I, I serve the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm just trying to say I, I would hate to see he hand down his wrath on you, but it's coming. So respectfully, come here and talk to the city council, but they really don't have to respond to what your issues are or your questions. You're to state what your concerns are in the minutes that you're given and sit down and respectfully respect the city meeting. That is the law. <clears throat> Well, the AG and I want to piggyback on everything this young lady said. I feel exactly the same way. I'm not here to criticize anybody today because I'm happy. I thank God for the leadership we have in this city. If people can find something to disagree with, that's their problem. I don't have anything to disagree with this council or staff or anything. I, <clears throat> I support what you're doing. You stood tall tonight, as many other nights. But I want to say something that I feel very good about here in this city. We have a restaurant that just opened up here in this city. I had breakfast there this morning. And honest to goodness, I thought my mother had come back from the grave <laughs> and, and cooked those salmon croquettes. And Councilman George Dodson and I ate, boy. <laughs> it's at 324 South Market Street, and it's called the Rusty Pot Cafe. If you haven't been there, you better go there. Absolutely. They really got good eating there, absolutely. And it's clean, it's a neat place, it make you feel good inside. It's the Rusty Pot Cafe, located at 324 South Market Street, and I'll be there tomorrow eating uh, <clears throat> chicken wings and, what do you call it? Waffles. Waffles. Thank you very much. God bless America, God bless Inglewood. God bless what he gave us, this staff, council, and my favorites. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Bay, it's hard to follow that. <laughs> Rusty Good Pines. evening, Mayor, <laughs> Council, staff. The reason we have two officers here tonight is because this community was threatened threatened by a man who had called our uh, elected official, the head of the city. I don't want to repeat the words, but I will because it has to be said. It's called the mayor punk, not just once, but twice. And like I said before, when you insult one man in this community, even if you didn't like him or you didn't vote for him, you're still, you're saying bad things about the community. Now this is a black man. He is a black man. I am a black man. You insult him, you insult me as well. Okay? So I do not like being called Nate. I do not like it when you call him a punk, and I do not like being called a punk. I take that very personal. Okay? Now, if you have a problem with somebody, do like men do. We go outside, downstairs, and we talk about it. 
And if you should happen to want to have to have a little festive cups, well, then that's just the way it goes. But uh, be a man when it come up to, come up to this this podium, and be respectful of everybody of every color, because it's in our constitution. We have to get along, whether you have a problem. See, because the number one thing is communication. You only solve a problem when two adults sit down and hash out that problem with reason and respect. How they say it? We agree to disagree. And we walk away. I know where you're at. You know where I'm at. These are my comments. Everybody, please have a beautiful week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Gil Matthew, uh, District 4. Everything that's been said makes sense. <clears throat> However, I must remind you that we have a United States Constitution. And some of it you may not agree with, but it's there and it hasn't been changed. In fact, one that I most find egregious is you can desecrate the flag because it's a part of free speech. And that's approved by the Supreme Court. <clears throat> so what I want to tell Mr. Butts, not Mr. Butts, Mayor Butts, <clears throat> there's something that's called pride restraint. And you've been in law enforcement uh, 37 years, and I hope you've heard of it. I was trying to talk to the city attorney, and he said he can't answer anything unless he gets permission from the council. Okay, but it's called prior restraint. And it's a term that's used in the Congress, U.S. Congress of the United States. And what it says is, it's a way to limit the amendment rights of free speech. And what it does is, it limits it by, when you come to an actual activity, such as a council meeting. And I think this was attempted to do with your rules of decorum. However, I'd like for you to look into it and maybe you could uh, get some information from the council because he, he said he couldn't tell me anything unless he get permission. And then again, uh, we're talking about finance and the success agency. <clears throat> Monday is a 630. That's a drop down date for many things in this city. Number one is the drop down date for the completion of the third quarter of this city with a financial report. That's going to be very, very important. And <clears throat> next thing is the drop down date for the successor agency <clears throat> for the first half of the ROPS. You have many contracts that's expiring, 630-14. That money is going to have to be transferred <clears throat> to the low or the, the uh, housing trust fund. Now, I've got the ROPs for July 1 to December. But you see, I have information, but nobody wants to talk. And I, I can't help you because if you don't understand, I'll give it to the city manager. He'll try to explain it to you. Oh. But you don't want to understand it. You Thank you. Your time, Mr. Matthew. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Diane Sombrano, and I'll be the man here. I will go ahead and say that which needs to be said and some of you will not like it. But in 10 days, they're about, depending on the time, we will be celebrating the Declaration of Independence. That event where local colonists stood up and said, enough is enough. Part of that was giving us, well, we pledge it every day, 
a declaration of independence and the constitutional rights that often in this room are being trampled. I don't believe that we should go down the religious path because we have the freedom of religion, not to weigh it on anybody else's head. But I will state that we should have no idols. Not a rock idol, not a religious idol, and certainly no political idols. There is only one individual, in my opinion, who re should be receiving our glory and honor. We just celebrated his birth, death, and resurrection. So those who would say that we should only speak in great and glorious terms about someone who has been disrespectful in this room to others are sorely mistaken. I remember that Mr. Tixera came defending the residents in his neighborhood and asking for a policy review of our police department as what should be done when shots are fired. And instead, he has been called, he has been told he should not speak out. There was an apology after several months that had to be given. But I will always stand up for anyone who tries to defend the residents of this community against any lack of a policy, which, by the way, the Department of Justice asked to conduct. And when I asked to see if that review had been made, it was not. So when those of you want to huddle around and protect and defend someone who has violated the rights of others, I will tell you, I won't be there. I stand up for the little person whose rights have been violated. And being a community of ethnic diversity, everyone in this room should understand that with much greater significance than the traditional Anglo Saxon, blonde, blue-eyed male. Mayor Council, I'm going to stand up against a comment that Joe Testeria made. I don't know why, where he come from calling people names, calling us cronies and all of this. We don't call them demons. We don't call him liar. We don't call him names. And everyone that comes up here and condone that type of uh, speech and talking to the mayor or anyone like that, they're, they're just as bad off as he is. It's disrespectful. And everybody want to jump on the Constitution, what your right is. Okay, Constitution, let's go from Constitution here. What about if I say, okay, I'm going to put my foot up in your mouth. If you don't stop calling me names, or I'm a dog, a dog you out. What you gonna do? Roll me straight on as a threat, wouldn't you? Isn't that a threat? Isn't that a threat? You a cop, is that a threat? It's a promise and a threat and it's a terrorist act. So that constitution that all of you all jumping on and lala gagging and all that, you could go down to prison with that. And I'm not going to be called no names, and I don't care who you think you are. You running up here like somebody's scared. Ain't nobody scared of none of y'all. And if these cops are here, they're getting paid to be here. If they're not in the front, they're in the back. So don't think that we're not covered. And I don't want to sit here with this fool. He comes up here again calling the man stupid. He's the damn liar. Since 2004, we've been going through this. C. Brooks, Julius, every chief in the world but Mark Fontarada has been going through this man crap. Leave it alone. Now what if I threaten him and say I'm a dog you out for calling me a crony? That's a threat. Then I'll be in jail because he'll press charges. Leave it alone and stop coming up here condoning that type of act with our council and the mayor. That's disrespectful. 
Jesus Christ, you need to have respect for yourself. Thank you. Okay, with that, we'll uh, close public comment. Uh, Council, Councilman Dodson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't know if I can follow that or not, but I'll try. It's a, you, um, you I wanted to just congratulate the, uh, the youth who did the art at Darby Park. I was privileged to be at that unveiling this past Saturday. Uh, the mural is beautiful, and it's the design that we approved here at the council. It was so much fun to go and see it come alive. If you have not visited the mural at Darby Park, I suggest that you do so. It is really beautiful, and it was done by the kids. Uh, they were under the uh, direction of an artist, but the kids actually did the painting, and it is really beautiful. They did a great job. I was also privileged this Saturday to, to be involved with the eye clean, where they clean the street, uh, Market Street, from uh, uh, Nutwood to Manchester. Uh, we also did the cleaning on Nutwood between Hillcrest and La Brea. Uh, there were volunteers, people from the different businesses uh, they are on those streets, and they work together. It was quite an outing. I also want to comment uh, on what Mr. Agee said about this new business. The one thing he did not tell you about this new business, it is a five-star restaurant. If you look up on the Internet, you will see that this restaurant re received five stars in all categories. This is a, a hidden diamond right here on Market Street that I didn't even know about until today. This morning was my first experience, but you have a chance to go. You need to go and visit this place. It's called the Rustic Pot Cafe, and I'm sure you will come away smiling. So um, let's support our local business, and this happens to be in the first district, so make sure you go out and support this business. Thank you very much for coming out. And uh, let's try to be a little bit better respectful to one another. This is a great city. It's on its way to the very top. So let's act like we're on this ride together. Thank you very much. And we'll see you next, well, not next week, but the week out. Councilman Padilla. Thank you, Mayor. Just a couple of words. Uh, First off, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> on uh, Thursday, I had an opportunity to be the uh, uh, keynote speaker at the graduation of La Tijera Middle School right there off of uh, Fairview and La Cienega. They actually had their event at Crozier School. Uh, it was just such a uh, wonderful sight to see all these young men and women excited about going on to the next journey in life, which is high school, and to hear all the good things that they've already accomplished. Uh, but uh, I want to thank La Tijera School for allowing me to be there and to help present these students with their diplomas uh, from uh, middle school. Uh, then, you know, I thought that was good, but then the following day, it uh, was awesome. Uh, I had a chance to go to the Connecting Women to Power event that's uh, put together by uh, uh, the chairman of the board, Jerome uh, Horton, Yvonne's husband, and uh, and also by uh, our city clerk, Yvonne Horton. And uh, what a class act. Uh, well over 2,000 people in attendance. Uh, the speakers were dynamic. Uh, I mean, it was just a, 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 you talk about five star, this was a five star event. And uh, I gotta tell you, uh, my wife and daughter were not able to make it, but we will all be there next year. Uh, I didn't wait to get home to tell her about it. I called her as soon as I got in my car. Uh, matter of fact, I even had a Blowing conversation. my phone up. Yeah. <laughs> had a conversation with the mayor as well. Dude. <laughs> I, I got to tell you guys, I mean, you know, there was a lot of public, uh, publicity about it, and the city clerk had discussed it several times in her comments, but it's not till you're there, until you hear the speakers, until you're in the excitement and in the moment that you realize how awesome of an event this is. 
and how many good how many people are being helped and given some direction that's going to help them the rest of their life uh, so again I want to thank you for letting me be a part of it and please thank uh, Jerome as well uh, or the chairman I should say uh, then the uh, the mayor and I had an opportunity on Saturday to attend the 46th anniversary and scholarship awards luncheon uh, put together by the Council of Black Nurses, the Los Angeles chapter. It was their uh, 46 uh, year anniversary, as I mentioned, and uh, again, standing room only, uh, great event. The mayor went up there, uh, welcomed everyone. Uh, again, these are exciting things that we're a part of, away from uh, here at the council, things that we all do, all the council members, the mayor, city staff, uh, attending these community events uh, to help keep things positive and let folks know that we're here to support them. Uh, on Sunday, uh, the mayor and I were also fortunate to be a part of the 60-year uh, anniversary for True Vine Church. Uh, the True Vine Church has been in existence for 60 years. It's been in Inglewood since 1987. Uh, and uh, Pastor Austin Williams, uh, we presented the pastor and the church with a uh, uh, commendation. Uh, the folks were really supportive and, and thankful. Mayor, can I get a minute? Yes, you can. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, in District 2, we don't have very many parks. We actually have one park. It's North Park. Uh, but let me tell you, it's an awesome park. If you get a chance to go by, do it, uh, especially if you're looking for a place to go exercise. We have a nice exercise equipment that's outdoors. Uh, there's a walkway for you to go and you know walk around, kind of eat, relax yourself. Uh, we have the lunch program that's going to be at North Park. Uh, a lot of good things happening there. Uh, in September, we'll be having our District 2 picnic there. But before that, on August the 9th, so put this on your radar. Uh, we're going to be having what's called the uh, District 2 Experience or Discover District 2 event, and that will be held over at True Vine Church in the parking lot. It will consist of vendors from the community. We'll have a car show. We'll have some entertainment. Again, it's an opportunity to bring our community together. There will be raffle prizes. We're looking for volunteers. So if anybody uh, out there wants to volunteer or if there's somebody out there any of you that have a car that you'd like to have in our uh, car show, please uh, give Ramon Quinones a call. He's my assistant at 412-8601. Um, and I think that, that about does it for me. Thank you very much, you guys. Uh, thank you for coming out here, and thank you for coming up and speaking and letting us know your concerns, especially as it relates to the liquor license uh, that we discussed early on. It's important for us to hear uh, what this community's concerns are and to come up here and, and feel like, you know what, we're working together as a team <coughs> to move this city forward. So thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your week. Councilman Morales. Thanks. Uh, first, let me say congratulations, Ms. H. It sounds like it was an awesome uh, uh, event. And I got to tell you, Alex should do your commercials next week. Because <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it made me want to go. It made me want to go. Anyway. <laughs> Um, but it doesn't surprise me, you know, it doesn't surprise me. Uh, also quickly just want to thank, uh, thank Mayor Budge for including us. I didn't, we didn't, I didn't even know he had given those scholarships until we got here and that it was his money, but you know, it was generous enough to include us in the picture taken. I appreciate that. We're a team. Um, and, um, see that that's what it is. Uh, and I know we're not going to be here next week. Um, there's a lot going on with the 4th of July. Some people really, uh, you know, go through a lot of kind of distress because of the mostly the illegal fireworks, which are very difficult. Want to repeat the phone number you call, which is 310-412-8771. But with it all during the celebration, I also want to say that, uh, you know, it's also important that we remember that those fireworks that are, are safe and sane and legal, those are being sold by our nonprofits, many of which, you know, I work closely with and they depend on that. This is their biggest biggest fundraiser uh, so those aren't the ones that are that are creating kind of the madness um, but so I just wanted to say that that was something that 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 was a, that is important to them so hopefully everybody has a safe 4th of July and uh, thank you for coming out thank you councilman uh, Franklin yes thank you mayor uh, let me just piggyback with my colleagues comments uh, particularly 
um, Councilman Morales with reference to these uh, illegal fireworks. Um, I want to reach out and identify we've had these issues, but it shows our clout of leadership when our mayor came forward and publicized in the local Inglewood Today newspaper, as well as recently we're doing email blasts to the public, identifying these are not our local vendors. In fact, we hadn't even started making the safe and sane fireworks available for purchase. And so the mayor gave specific information, as you heard Councilman Morales indicate, the number to call to help suppress this type of energy. And it heightened over the weekend because of the, um, what they call the World Cup. And so as a consequence, uh, people got very excited. And as you saw on various TV broadcasts, uh, too excited. And so just ev remind everyone that respect other people's property, respect also the, the rights that some still have infant and small children and animals and those the illegal fireworks have created a disruption. Uh, Madam City Clerk, I just wanted to acknowledge I was not able to make it at your event. I'm, I'm glad to hear it was a success. I had a prior commitment. Uh, I had been with Director Gloria Gray for the West Basin uh, Metropolitan Water District. Uh, we took a inspection tour to Hoover Dam and the Colorado Aqueduct. And I just want to remind everyone that you take it for granted when you go to the faucet to turn the water off and on. Um, when we went through this major study to identify the issues that we're dealing with, thank goodness for the President Hoover back in the days, it used to be Boulder Dam, uh, and the fact that the, that dam has a direct impact on seven states. If we don't get the snow from Utah and Colorado, it has a direct impact to our water here in Southern California. And so identifying that we all have to do our fair share of being conservationists with our precious gems that we have, in this case, our water. And so on that note, don't take it for granted. And you, we need it every day, but if it's not there, shame on us if we, because we didn't take the time to preserve our resources. Thank you very much. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Um, I wanted to uh, close by giving the community some facts because if you listen to council meetings sometimes with some of the comments, you think that we don't do anything here. Now, I told you before that, that um, numbers count with me because they're a way to catalog <coughs> progress, stagnation, or decline. In uh, street resurfacing, square feet of streets resurfaced. In 2010 to 2011, we resurfaced 256,000 square feet of roadway. Program for 2013 to 2014 is 1.5 million. That's a 492% increase in dollars spent on resurfacing. Yes, we've been saving money while we've balanced the budget and programming it for services for the residents. On water capital projects, um, in 2010 to 2011, uh, the year before I took office, we didn't do any linear feed of water piping, none, zero. I imagine it was only when we had sinkholes. Program for 2013-2014, 19,450 square f uh, linear feet of, of piping, uh, as opposed to the 6,000 we were able to do in 2011-2012, a 224% increase. On the money spent on water capital projects, from 2011 to 2012, we spent 400,000. Programmed for 2013 to 2014, $3.1 million for water capital projects. For sewer, in 2010 to 2011, we spent $140,000. We're programmed for $1.175 million for sewer capital projects, a 730% increase. In crime, for both violent crime and overall crime, these last three years are the lowest consecutive years of crime in this city since we started keeping crime stats in 1978. In residential sound insulation, we insulated 1,020 homes between March of 2013 and March of 2014, 20 more than we set as our goal, an investment of $35 million. $35 million we had lost 
that we recovered to, uh, to protect our residents from the intrusion of noise. New businesses in Inglewood. In the last eight months, Three Weavers Brewery at 1031 West Manchester Boulevard, Orleans and York Deli at Locust and Florence, Dollar Car Rental Facility at 9150 South Aviation, Clean Energy CNG Fueling Station at 9131 South Aviation, a recording studio at 8636 South Aviation, which is currently under construction, AutoZone 2600 West Manchester under construction, WSS Warehouse Shoe Store, 3000 West Century, Permits ready to issue for new construction. Motorini LA Cycle Sports, 821 West Olive, a new business. Jack in the Box, 3107 West Manchester Boulevard, a remodel and reuse of a vacant building is under construction. Starbucks at 4801 West Century, a new business. Rusty Pot Cafe, 324 South Market Street, a new business. Sprinkles Cupcakes, 300 North Oak. Dunkin' Donuts, 828 West Hillcrest. Starbucks, 3351 West Century Boulevard, a remodel of an existing Starbucks. Yogurt Land at 3561 West Century Boulevard. We held the graduations for Morningside City Honors and Inglewood High at the Forum last Wednesday. The city gave them one of our community days. We gave them a community day because we wanted them to not have to go to El Camino to graduate their students and sit out in the sun and look across the field and say, is that my child graduating? <laughs> they graduated at the Forum. There was a, an eight foot by six foot um, display, uh, video display. Every child that came up to get their diploma's face was on that screen so the parents could say, that's my child graduating. There were over 6,000 guests and relatives that attended the three graduations. It was extreme and immense community pride uh, in, in that celebration. It was wonderful. Um, the mural at Darby Park, the councilman talked about, uh, designed and, and drawn by Inglewood resident students. Uh, that, that is a beautiful mural. Uh, the reason I brought the three youth in uh, that received the scholarships and had the young man speak, a 13-year-old, I'd hoped that he would be a model to some of us about how adults address other adults in public. You can't hide behind the First Amendment of the Constitution and say it excuses you from good manners, good taste, being an effective communicator. I'm sorry. Anyone that sits and tries to defend what that gentleman does on a regular basis is wrong, then that's my free speech. And, and, and to do that suggests to me you have a problem with leaders that aren't from Redondo Beach in Manhattan, as I hear you praise so frequently, uh, Culver City. I'm sorry, I think you have a problem with acknowledging that this city has improved. Oh, I forgot another business that opened this year, the Forum by Madison Square Garden. Um, I was interviewed by the LA Business Journal today they wanted to know how Inglewood has done what it's done, and they spent two hours here. So I odd that some of us just can't even find themselves the way to say, hey, you know, that was good. Even when Mr. Pacheco did something good, somehow it was cloaked in some anger about something that happened in the past. Incredible to me. You know, like it or not, like it or not, we're doing some great things here and it's being recognized. These businesses didn't come here because it's so terrible in Englewood. They're coming here because they want to be here. Uh, the shop off group purchased the uh, Daniel Freeman site and they're putting four to $500,000 townhouses and condominiums there. It's okay to feel good about Englewood because a lot of other people and places do. I wanna close the meeting in the name of Muriel Franklin Glass Oh, uh, 81 years, and before I close the meeting, uh, Councilman Morales will be here next week. Uh, it's the week after we're closed, and so so it's it, it, so come next Tuesday, we'll be here. All right, we're adjourned. Thank you. I did remember. I did. Yes.